everybody, welcome to our section 4.2 lecture video on writing fractions in lowest terms. In other words, we're going to be simplifying fractions today. So the first thing we're going to do is actually work on some prime factorization because that's going to help us with our simplifying. So prime factorization is where you're breaking a number apart into a product of its prime factors. So it's a number that is written as a product of its prime factors. And I'll show you how to do this in just a minute, but before we get there, um, a little bit of divisibility test to help you guys get started and be clear with your guesses of what a number might be divisible by. So a number is divisible by two if it's even. So if that last digit is a zero, two, four, six, or eight. So if that number is even, it's going to be divisible by two, which is a nice test, okay? A number is divisible by three. This was kind of an interesting one is that it, the sum of its digits, if you add all the digits together, it's divisible by three. So what I mean by that is, like example B down here, where we have 504, five plus zero plus four is nine, and nine is divisible by three, which means that the number 504 is also going to be divisible by three. A couple other ones for you. Um, a number is divisible by four if the last two digits are divisible by four. So that 504 again, that 04 is divisible by four. So the number 504 is also going to be divisible by, by four. All right, you guys might know this one. A number is divisible by five if the last digit is zero or five. Okay, and a number is divisible by 10 if the last digit is a zero. I'm just giving you some examples here so you can hopefully get started. Because how you do find prime factorization is going to be by making factor trees. And let me show you how those work. And there's going to be lots of different ways to, to do yours. Um, but generally what you're thinking is what number times what number gives you that top number. So I'm thinking what times what gives me 240. So I might think, well, it ends in a zero. So that means it's divisible by 10. So I might think this would be 24 times 10. Then I'm gonna keep going because neither one of those is prime. So I'm gonna keep going with those. So 24, I'm thinking what times what gives me 24? Um, how about six and four? Six times four equals 24. Then I can keep going some more because those aren't prime either. So six would be three times two and four is two times two. And three, two, two, and two are all prime numbers, so now I'm, I'm, I can stop. Uh, let's see, this 10 up here, I could keep going as well. 10 would be five times two. When you do the prime factorization, you're looking at these prime numbers that are on the ends. So the three, the two, both of those twos, the five and the two. Those are the numbers that you're looking for for prime factorization. And you can write it in a couple different ways. So you could write it just um, the way that we have it circled here. We could say that this equals three times two times two times two times five times two, and that's fine. You also could write this with exponents. So you could say, well, there's one five, there's one three, and one, two, three, four. There are four twos, so that would be two to the fourth. So you also could write it like that, 
5 times 3 times 2 to the 4th. Both of those are just fine. They're just different formats of prime factorization. Are you guys ready for another one? The next one is 504. I gave you guys some hints while we were going through the divisibility tests. Um, so this one, uh, I know it's even. It's divisible by 2. I know it's divisible by 3 because uh, 9 is divisible by 3. I know that it's divisible by 4 because those last two digits is divisible by 4. So I could start a lot of different ways. Um, how about we start with the 4 since it's bigger. So I know it's divisible by 4. So what you could do in your calculator is do 504 divided by 4 and you'll get 126 for the other part. So 4 times 126 gives us 504. And then we can keep going. 4 is pretty simple. That one's 2 times 2. But 126 is a little more interesting. Uh, so I know 26 is not divisible by 4, so we don't have another 4. Uh, but I could do 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 6 is 9. So the whole thing is divisible by 3. So you could do 126, and you could divide by 3 if you wanted to. Um, and then in your calculator, you would just do 126 divided by 3, and you would get 42. 3 is prime, so you can stop with that one, but the 42 is composite. It is not prime. So we need to keep going with that one. So let's see, 42 would be 6 times 7. And 7 is prime, but 6 isn't. So 6 would be 3 times 2. So looking at all the prime numbers, I've got a couple of 2's over here. I have a 3 up there, another 3, a 2, and a 7. So I can write my prime factorization uh, either way. So I could do 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 7. I can do it that way. Or I could write it with exponents. I've got what, 1, 2, 3, 2, so that would be 2 to the 3rd. I've got 2, 3, so that would be 3 squared. And 1, 7, so times 7. So you could write it that way as well. Okay. The last one, I'm going to let you guys have a moment to try it. So pause your video. Uh, the last number is 468. See if you can do the prime factorization and I will show you the answer in just a couple seconds. All right, you should be getting uh, two twos, two threes, and a 13. So you can write it this way or you could write it as two squared times 3 squared times 13. Okay, hopefully that went well. Now that we've practiced some prime factorization, we're going to actually get into simplifying fractions. So you can simplify a fraction by the dividing the numerator and denominator by a common factors. And the reason we just did the prime factorization is that the prime factorization can help you find those common factors. Sometimes you can see them pretty easily. You can see, oh, they both are divisible by 4, or they're both divisible by a certain number. But sometimes they're a little tricky. You know, they're both divisible by 17. You may not see that right off the bat. And so the prime factorization can help you find common factors if they're not obvious to you. So let's try a few. I'm going to try it. Uh, both ways, using prime factorization and not using prime factorization, uh, just to show you both both ways, and you can choose what's right for you um, in each problem. For the first one, I have 8 over 20, and I'm simplifying it. So with this one, I noticed that 8 and 20 are both divisible by 4. So what I could do is divide by 4 in the numerator and the denominator. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 2 and 5 are prime, and they have nothing in common, so I'm done simplifying. In part B, I've got 56 over 63, and you may see this one automatically, that 56 and 63 are both divisible by 7. So you could do the same thing here. You could divide by 7, 
in the numerator and the denominator. 56 divided by 7 is 8. 63 divided by 7 is 9. And we're done. 8 and 9 don't have any common factors. But in part C, when I have 119 over 153, I don't have anything jumping out at me. So this is one of the times when I would use prime factorization. So 119, I'm thinking, what is that divisible by? And it's not divisible by 2. It's not even divisible by 3 or 4 or 5 or 10. So then you're looking at other numbers. So maybe you're looking at your calculator thinking, okay, is it divisible by 7? That would be the next prime number. Um, and it is. So 119 is actually 7 times 17. With the 153, nothing is jumping out there either. So what I would probably think is, well, if this one is 7 times 17, is 153 divisible by 7? No, it's not. Okay, is it divisible by 17? It is, actually. It's 17 times 9. And then 9 is 3 times 3. So I can do the prime factorization here, 3 times 3 times 17. And here, we find that they're both divisible by 17, which helps me to simplify. So I can divide by 17 and divide by 17 to simplify. And what's left after I do that is a 7 in the numerator, 3 times 3, which would be 9 in the denominator. All right, last one up here is 169 over 156. And here's another one where it's not really jumping out at me what this might be simplified by. So I'm going to do prime factorization one more time here. 169, because I know my perfect squares a little too well, I know that this one is 13 squared, which would be 13 times 13. So with 156, I probably would think, is it divisible by 13? Because that would be great. That would help me simplify it. Um, and turns out it is. Um, it's 13 times 12. And 12 can be simplified. That would be uh, 6 times 2. And 6 would be 2 times 3. Uh, so now I've got two 2's and a 3 and a 13. So then when I'm simplifying, I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 13. So I'm going to divide by 13 and divide by 13. So I'm going to have a 13 left in my numerator. In the denominator, I've got a 2 times 2, which would be 4, times 3, which is 12. So I'm going to have 13 over 12 as my answer. And I know that's an improper fraction. It's okay to have improper fractions as your answers, I promise. Okay? Next up, we're going to add some variables in there. So I like to just take the numbers by themselves first and then take the variables by themselves second. I think that works out pretty nicely. So in part A, I've got 10A squared over 16AB. Uh, first thing I notice is that 10 and 16 are both divisible by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Divide by 2 and divide by 2. So that'll give me a 5 in the numerator and an 8 in the denominator. Then I want to look at these variables. So A squared would be A times A. AB would be A times B. And now I see that I can divide out an A. So A divided by A is 1. I can divide by A in the numerator. I can divide by A in the denominator. And those simplify out. Then what I'm left with would be 5 times A, which is 5A. In the numerator, 8 times B, which would be 8B in the denominator. All right. In part B, uh, it's a negative fraction, which is fine. It just means that our answer is going to be negative. And I've got 12x over 42x. And what I notice is that 12 and 42 are both divisible by 6. So I'll go ahead and divide the numerator and the denominator by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 42 divided by 6 would be 7. And it's going to be negative because it was negative at the beginning. Then what I notice is I have an x and an x in the numerator and denominator. So what I can do is divide by x and divide by x. 
which actually eliminates all of my x's. So my answer then is negative 2 sevenths as a simplified fraction. All right, in part C, I've got 36 x to the third y over 63 xy squared. So one thing I probably notice is 36 and 63 are both divisible by nine. Now if you didn't see nine right off the bat, if you saw three, you can always simplify in two steps. You could always simplify by three and then do another three. But I saw the nine pretty quickly, so let's go ahead and do that. 36 divided by nine would be four. 63 divided by nine would be seven. And then let's look at those variables. So x to the third y, that would be three x's and a y. x, y squared would be one x and two y's. Then what I see is I can divide out one of the x's and one of the y's. So then what's left in the numerator would be a four and two x's, which would be x squared. In the denominator, I have a seven and a y that's left. So seven y in the denominator. And that's my answer is four x squared over seven y. The last one is negative 270 x y z to the fourth over 105 x z to the fourth. Go ahead and give that one a try at home. Pause your video, uh, try that one. You might want to do some factorization, okay? And we'll, I'll give you the answer here in three, two, one. You should be getting negative 18y over seven. So for me, I saw that they were all divisible by five first and then 54 over 21, and then 54 and 21 are both divisible by three, so then I simplified one more time to get to 18 over seven, okay? Uh, the x's divide out, all of the z's divide out, you're just left with a y in the numerator. All right, last one says write 36 seconds as a fraction of a minute. Answer in simplest form, all right. So I'm doing this as a fraction of a minute. And since we're in seconds, I know that one minute has 60 seconds in it. So when I'm writing this as a fraction of a minute, I'm going to have 36 seconds over a total minute, which would have 60 seconds. Then I can answer it in simplest form, which means I need to simplify. First thing I see is that 36 and 60 are both divisible by six. So let's simplify it that way first. 36 divided by six is six. 60 divided by six is 10. And I can actually simplify it again from here if I would like to, because six and 10 are both divisible by two. So I'm going to divide by two and divide by two to get it all the way in simplest form. Six divided by two is three. 10 divided by two is five. So this would be three fifths of a minute. All right, uh, do plenty of practice on these. Make sure you're great at simplifying fractions because it's something we're going to use for the rest of the chapter. Good luck this week, guys.